Nah. We're taping this on Veterans Day as two members of the seven investing team are veterans. Matt Cochran and Austin Lieberman. First of all, thank you for your service. And second, I wanted to give them a chance to share some advice uh, for their fellow veterans and active duty personnel, some financial advice they wish they would learn. And of course, this applies to people because not many companies outside the military do a lot of financial training. But first, Matt, why don't you share your military background with the uh, seven investing audience? Sure. And, and thanks, Dan, for, for doing this. Uh, I was in the United States Navy from basically 1996 to the end of 2002. Uh, I mostly served on the nation, Naval Computer and Telecommunication Station on Guam for two years. And then I was on the USS Carter Hall uh, for the rest of my uh, service out of Norfolk. And I was an electronics technician, worked on communications equipment. Wow. Austin Lieberman, what, uh, you're, you're actually still in the military, in the reserve, but why don't you tell, about, tell us about your service? Yeah. Um, thanks, Dan. And thanks, Matt, for your service and your family's service and commitment. And that's, and that's one thing I always like to do when I see, um, you know, veterans is, is thank their family. And I appreciate it a lot when, when people think to thank my family, because as much as um, veterans, you know, sacrifice and stuff, really their families are the ones that uh, miss them on birthdays and stuff like that. It's kind of easy when, when you're, I mean, it's not easy, but it's easier when you're missing things because you're in training or, or deployed or something like that. It's really hard for for family members back home. Um, yeah, so my history, I graduated from the University of Central Florida in 2011, did reserve officer training corps, and that's just kind of a way you could do some military training and then commission as an officer if you're not smart enough to go to one of the academies, which I wasn't. Um, so I, I started my military career in 2011, was active duty all the way until 2018, at which point we were ready to kind of spend more time together as a family. And I tra transitioned into the Air National Guard. And then my career, I was a tactical air control party officer, uh, otherwise known as what's called an air liaison officer. And we basically um, help coordinate close air support for the Air Force with uh, all of the other um, services in, in the United States, as well as our international partners. Well, those of us on the team who are not veterans absolutely appreciate it. And uh, that's great advice. I will remember to thank military families when I come across them. Matt, is it fair to say that the military did not do a lot in terms of training you to invest, to save your money, to plan for your future? Well, in my case, it's been a while. So let's start there. But <laughs> I, I don't remember specifically any education. Now that that being said, let me let me say this. Like when I uh, got out, there was a, a transition assistance program. Uh, I believe they called it uh, TAP or TARP. And it was like a great class I went to that was like a week long. And uh, it told me, it, it told, it instructed people like how to like, just do simple things like how, how to prepare a resume and how to like do a job interview and just things like that. And a lot of people that I was served with didn't do that when they were getting out. So there are programs like in the military that not, maybe not everyone takes advantage of. However, to my knowledge, to my recollection, uh, no, as far as like investing money or how to be uh, just like financial tips, even basic classes like budgeting, I don't remember any kind of instruction or education on that. It's also worth noting that in college, there's very little resume building or how to interview for job training. It's something I found as someone who's been doing hiring, that's not there. And in terms of finance, we know it's not taught at all. Austin, was your experience similar? Yeah, pretty pretty similar to Matt, and we we served at you know different time periods, right? And really, not a whole lot has changed. I mean, same thing with common education, right? In the United States, not a whole lot has changed in terms of getting any type of formalized financial education. And and part of me thinks like maybe that's because of I don't know, not wanting the liability that might be associated with it or whatever. One thing that that has I think changed even just over my short career, which is nine years now, individuals are more willing to talk about finance and investing, um, you know, in, in these most recent years than earlier on in my career. So I think we're making progress, Dan. So Matt, you've been out for a while, but obviously you have friends who are veterans and, you know, you certainly know people in the service. Do you find that they're open to investing because maybe they didn't have that 401k exposure that people had in traditional jobs? Uh, and I know I'm asking kind of a dumb question because veterans is a very, very big group. Well, yeah, I, I think that's uh, the big point I, I would say. It's like I, there are more than 17 million veterans in the U.S., and that represents a wide demographic that encompasses 
all ages and wealth classes, uh, you know, race, it's go, go down the line, gender, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and so the, for a large part, you know, they're, they're mostly going to reflect the American population, I would imagine. Uh, you know, the average age that Americans start saving for retirement is 31 years old. And um, now the thing I would say, if that's true for veterans, they're missing out on a unique opportunity. Um, you know, many, uh, when people go to graduate high school, they go to college, and, and many people rack up a lot of college debt uh, while they're at college. And if you join the service, uh, you have a chance to take advantage of the GI Bill and officer programs like Austin to basically get through college. Meaning you can basically, like I did, like I graduated college without any debt at all. Um, and so you can start saving for retirement a lot earlier than the average person because you don't have that like huge tens of thousands of dollars in college debt, uh, like, uh, you know, at, the, at, a, at a similar age. And, um, you know, while on active duty, veterans, they certainly make a low salary, but they also have like little expenses, like things like food and housing and things like that. There are well, in my case, I was single and like that was just provided for. I lived on base. I could go to the galley to eat. Unfortunately, when I was in, I didn't do any of those things. And I came out with like like hardly any savings at all. But there's, there was an opportunity to. And many, many times uh, when I got serious about saving and investing uh, in my 30s, I really regretted how I did not do that uh, while I was in the service and then immediately after the service too. Yeah, that's an important lesson we talk about all the time. You can't go back in time. So the best day to start saving is now. The best day to start saving for your kids and teaching them to save, that's today. Austin, I've got a silly question and then a little bit of a follow-up to Matt. Do you outrank Matt? Uh, I yeah, don't well, know. I'm enlisted. I, I, I'm enlisted. I don't know. We've never talked about uh, t- Technically, I guess so. Uh, I never ever looked at it that way. <laughs> My view is always. Uh, nor, nor have I. I. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just bringing it up for future meetings. <laughs> My my view, though, is always that I, I worked for the people that um, I was responsible for leading. Uh, I always looked at it as I still look at it. I work for them. They don't they don't work for me. Um, just just my take on it. So to get back on track here, also, yeah. are, are, are there separate special investing uh, properties or, or tools for active military or veterans? Yeah. And, you know, this is a, a good question, Dan, and an, an important topic. So while you're active duty and still even people like me, I'm in the Air National Guard or somebody in the reserves, you have access to what's called the thrift savings plan. And there's some details that we won't get into just kind of the time of the show, but there's basically a match program now, which kind of you put a percent of your military pay in and then the military matches up to a certain percent, which is very similar to kind of workplace 401ks out in the corporate world, which is a really cool advantage that the military didn't use to offer. And so those options, some of them are, you know, very aligned with options that you would have if you weren't in the military. And so um, it's called the TSP, the thrift savings plan. And there's a bunch of different ones, but, but really not giving personal investing advice here. The one that I was focused on while I was, while I was active duty was the C fund. And what the C fund is, is it's basically just investing in the S and P 500 or basically the largest, most stable 500 public companies in the United States. And over time, you know, those go up and down, but over time, they tend to do very well. They average about 8% a year. And if, you know, somebody, say somebody was retiring this year in 2000 or in 2021, if they would have invested in the S&P 500 or basically the C fund and started in uh, 2001, so over 20 years and just put $10,000 in, and this is very simplistic, that would have grown just put it in when you first started and left it there. A lot of people don't have that much, but this is just a very simple scenario. Um, Normally people would invest over time, but still $10,000 in 2001, never touching it, never looking at it, just leaving it uh, would be worth $33,000 today. And that's, that's pretty good for, for not having to do anything with that money and just letting it grow. Um, And there's life cycle funds too, which adjust when you get closer to retirement, take a look at the C fund, if you're thinking, you might look at a life cycle fund um, for the date that you would consider retiring. And that just gets a little less risky as you get closer to retirement. But really the C fund is just fine. 
that actually segs into our next question, our final question really well. And I'll throw it out to any of the uh, active duty military, any veterans. If you want to get in touch with us, obviously we have two guys on the team that share your experience. Info at 7investing. That's the number 7investing.com or hit us up on Twitter. We're all on Twitter, easy to find, at 7investing. Again, that's the number 7investing. Share the question. We'll make sure it gets to the right person. But Austin, one of your Twitter fans, and I'm not going to share his name, but he's actually active duty. He's former military. He's a little bit older, close to retirement. And he asks, should I be worried about stocks correcting if I am focused on long-term investing? And the answer is kind of yes and no If he at his age group. Your thoughts there, Austin. Then Matt, I'll, I'll let you have the last word. Yeah. So this is, this is an important one. And, you know, Dan, um, the military people, military personnel have some really unique advantages. So I know this person well. I worked with them and he's amazing. Um, he is at, he's done more than 20 years. So he's going to get paid every month for the rest of his life. It's a percentage of what he made on active duty. And that's just how the pension works. So if you are in a scenario where you don't need the money within five years and slash, or you have a pension, you're going to get paid the rest of your life and you don't really need that money. Then the answer is no, don't, don't worry about uh, the market pulling back. That happens. It's natural. The best thing you can do, Dan, just like you said at the beginning of the show, the best time to invest is now and then just invest regularly each month. If you need money in the next three to five years, don't have that money invested in the market. Otherwise, don't worry about you know the market crashing or correcting. And Matt, what about the person who doesn't have a pension? Maybe was only in for one term, served a few years, or a person who was never in the military and there aren't a lot of pensions anymore. What should that person be doing as they're getting closer and closer to retirement? Start saving. I mean, the best time to start saving is, is five years ago. The second best time is today, right? Or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll also th throw in that you want to adjust your holdings to reflect when you're going to need the money. So if you're going to have to start taking, let's say it's 4% of the value of your portfolio, you want to make sure that's in more stable things. You know, In some cases, you are going to convert to cash. We can't give specific advice, but you do want to plan for whatever the reason was you saved for in the first place. If that's retirement, if that's a house, that's when you take the money out of the market at advantageous times and start putting it into something safer because you're going to spend the money. Guys, this was great. I appreciate it. Uh, any, any last words? Uh, thank you again for your service. Happy Veterans Day. It was Veterans Day when we taped this. Did you guys get to do anything fun? Did you get some free wings at Buffalo Wild Wings? No, I, I'm, I'm working. So it's just like every other day, it's just like every other day, but uh, real quick, you know, Dan, that was a great interview you did uh, with the workshop for warriors. Was that the, uh, Oh yeah. Her, her, her non Luis E Prado started. Oh, it's our podcast on Tuesday, started a program literally cashed in everything he owned because he was uh, in the military at the time. And he saw that that servicemen were, were leaving the service and these are these guys that have been trained. They've shown they can learn how to do things. And there's this mismatch where there's all these unfilled manufacturing jobs, 2.4 million in the next 10 years. And he basically created something that trained them so they could fill those jobs. It is a program that I can't say enough about. I urge you to listen to the podcast. I urge you to donate. It is a really great program. That's Workshops for Warriors. Matt, thank you for bringing it, for, for bringing it up. Matt, Austin, thank you for doing this. We will... Uh, We'll see you on the show next week. Thanks, Dan. Can't wait. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.